tomb to Wagga. Day four. Good morning. It's good to see you. I guess word has spread that I'm I'm okay and I'm safe because the cows are now very content to come through my campsite, say hi, and go back to business eating grass. of the Murrumbidgee River and the Tumut River right here so right behind me is the Tumut River and if I turn that's the Murrumbidgee I'll be taking the Murrumbidgee River all the way to Gundagai and then continuing on back to my hometown of Wagga Wagga. So once you cross this gravel bar, you've entered the Murrumbidgee River. Right, I've officially entered the Murrumbidgee River I just had a chat with one of the sheep and cattle farmers here and he was curious about my paddle and some of my observations and about the, the bank erosion from the constant change of the water flows which actually destroys the vegetation. Uh, he said, Lee, really I wish politicians would come and do what you're doing and paddle the river to see with their own eyes and I'm like, yeah, that would be my recommendation as well. It's uh, paddling the Murrumbidgee from Wagga to Narandra was eye-opening a few weeks ago and paddling the Tumut River to the Murrumbidgee has been eye-opening as well. Probably an hour and a half paddle time from Gundagai. The river has slowed down quite a bit, contrary to what this would suggest right now. The river's probably, the Martin Beach is probably only running in most places around two kilometers an hour. So you have to paddle quite a bit to keep it up to 5k an hour. Pack rafts are a lot slower than a kayak, but on the upside, pack rafts are far more comfortable to paddle. It's easier on your back and your butt, and a lot more flexible in different types of water, whether I'm doing little mini riffles or mini rapids. Flat water, I can take it anywhere, portaging around dams and with a breeze because. This is actually a two-man pack raft. I use it as a one-man for expeditions and it weighs less than four kilos. So there are pros and cons and the reality is I'm in no rush to knock out miles. I see a lot of people, they're very happy to do a 50, 60, 70 kilometer day in their kayak and on slow water and that's just not my MO. My MO is to really taste the dirt, taste the water, feel the environment and get an idea of how this river really is. And I don't think you can really achieve that if the focus is on knocking out big miles. So I'm really close 
Sugunda guy into the campground where I'm staying, probably less than two kilometers now. The river really has minimal current. It has widened out. There was a couple of sections that got pretty narrow and had a couple of little riffles and a lot of snags that are problematic. So this campground should be between these two bridges. So there's really no clear access point for the caravan park. There's not like no beach area or anything and I paddled right by it. There's under both bridges and I had to paddle back upstream 300 meters and I just came back upstream and to call to see if there's a marked area and there really isn't. So now I've got to slowly hug the shoreline and just look for a tiny little grassy patch that goes straight up a hill and I'll be lugging my <laughs> <laughs> up the hill. Um, God, <laughs> what a way to end the so, day. I'm gonna hug this shoreline. I don't want to get caught in that current because it's gonna take me to Wagga. Watch out for all these snags. And uh, Right by the bridge pylons that I just came through, I did see a tiny opening and that's it, I guess. I'm used to like a little gravelly or beach area, but um, not the case. 